Hello and welcome to the White's PNB podcast, where me and one other guest discuss White's PNB and everything surrounding it. This is episode one featuring Omni. You may know Omni as a staple of the YouTube White's PNB communities, or as an influential part of Siva Gunner. Omni is someone who genuinely loves this community and also makes great videos, so please go check the channel out. And if you're in the White's PNB community and want to be on the podcast, shoot me a DM on my Twitter at Soroz. So, thank you for tuning in, and enjoy the podcast. Okay, well, let's go ahead and get started with this. Uh, So, I guess we'll go ahead and start with, like, where you started out with LYTPMV. First vid you saw, maybe, of YTP or YTPMV, and, like, what grabbed your attention from that? Yeah, well, like, I actually definitely remember, because... So, I started, like, I started seeing YTPMVs probably when... You know, around the, when they were first made, um, and it's kind of funny because so I'm not from the U.S. I'm from Israel, and I didn't really know English back in the time. Like I was a kid, I was a kid, and I had really basic English. So what I would do is I go on my dad's computer, and I would just look up Sonic on Sonic. Google. Sonic. Yeah, just Sonic. I, I'm <laughs> I was really into Sonic. So I just searched Sonic in Google and I would like just, you know, look at the results, whatever. Some led to new crown, some led to just IGN or pictures, whatever. And one time I landed on YouTube, which was new at the time. It's probably going to be like 2006 or something. I was, I think, in the, ooh, I don't remember how the grades translate. I think it was like sixth or seventh grade. Oh, yeah. And yeah. And uh so, you know, I found YouTube and then I started like every day I'll get back to, from school and I searched Sonic on YouTube and YouTube was so small at the time that every different day you would get sometimes you get you'd get the same results for Sonic because there were there were no new uploads with, you know, which that is tag. it's crazy to think about with how like fucking big YouTube is now. Yeah, like how like small, could, how small the Internet refresh. used to be. Oh yeah, you could like look up Sonic the Hedgehog and then refresh like after a few seconds, and it will be like, like a hundred new videos. Well, not maybe not a hundred, but oh, you know, well, perhaps. honestly, it wouldn't surprise me if it was a hundred. But yeah, anyway. Yeah, yeah. So um, I would look up Sonic every fucking day, <laughs> <laughs> and I remember it was like back when like it was Sonic O Six was big at the time, so I would always like look at AMVs or Sonic O Six, and his world was like everywhere. Yeah. And then one time I just discovered YouTube poop. You know, I think the first YouTube poops I've seen were Iju Will Amam um, or Mama Luigi backwards. And they they used to make a lot of YouTube poops and also a lot of YTP and Vs at the time when it was pretty fresh. Mm-hmm. Um, so the, the first one, I think, was like one of Iju Will Amam's early ones, uh, probably Tomorrow Isle or something like that. And through their channel... I've later also discovered Vorhaiz and you know, uh, dropped some of the dongos, whatever, all that stuff. And then when I made my YouTube account, I tried making YouTube poop myself, uh, by myself. And it was a movie maker and I didn't really upload anything because I tried uploading the project file instead of the... <laughs> I did the same exact thing. Oh my God. <laughs> Yeah, like up until a few years ago, up until a few years ago, you could look at your like you could look at my video manager in in YouTube, and you'd see like three failed uploads from like when I opened my channel, and it says the file name is like WMP, like I don't remember the yeah file. whatever the project file is. Yeah, yeah. God, that's yeah. funny. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, through pr- probably through like Sonic YTP and Vs, I think, and then I just stuck around until now. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, that was 2007. God damn, yeah, literally over mm-hmm. a decade ago. Yep. I think I think mine's pretty similar, uh, except just later because I'm just a lot younger than a lot of people. I was into Y2P before I got into Y2P and B, but mm-hmm. I think it was something along the lines of just like some random, I don't know, Mario One, you know, Mario CGI, <laughs> the classics back in like 2010 or 2009 or something. And then yeah. I think 2011 is when I first saw YTPMV, and I remember it was through, it was through one YTPMV. God, I wish I could I could remember what it was. And then I would have to like click on the related videos because I didn't know what it was called, and I was like, holy shit, this is really <laughs> cool. So I'd click on the related videos. So every time I wanted to like watch more YTPMV before I knew what it was called, 
I'd have to go back to that one, and then eventually I made oh, it. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, and then eventually I made it to like, you know, the whole brony thing started, and then that really <laughs> that really kicked me up, and but oh, yeah, God, it it took me it took me a good like couple of weeks before I was like, oh, that's what it's called, YTPMV. Mm-hmm. Yep, it's it's so ponies to me is like when a new so ponies like is like when a new chapter of was like a beginning of a new chapter for the community Mm -hmm. there's like i like to look at the ytp like history of the community and like i don't know if i want to call them chapters but whatever like eras maybe yeah yeah so so like the first era that was you know that was a huge difference from the last one was probably where video game music and kijin music were um taking you know starting to be more popular than the classic ytp and v's which i don't know if like a lot of people actually listening would actually know about what classic ytp and v's are so i'd like maybe i'll like, explain later but you probably know you know yeah, right? the, yeah yeah so um so it was like classic ytp and v's up until like maybe 2000 and like nine i think was the latest they were actively made uh except for like a few like very few examples and then it was like video game music cover for f- covers of video game music and Kijin music, uh, and then right after when Kijin music was huge came the ponies, um, and the community was pretty big already at the time where Bronies hit. I think it was like you said it was two thousand eleven. Eleven, right? yeah, yeah, somewhere yeah. around there. It was like so videos like also with ponies you would have more. You would you could have seen more videos consistently hitting big numbers with mm-hmm. ponies. It was like one of the first times where there were like where something that started like a fad or something or or a trend. I don't want to use the word meme, but I mean I mean I guess it kind of works here, even though it's I don't yeah. like that word, but yeah, 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 I don't like that word, but whatever. <laughs> it kind of works here. So it was like the first time where YTP and VSP no people from the community, not people who are because you know there was always in the community the people who just kind of made videos casually, never really tried to make make it big on the internet, whatever, and get a following. And you would get people that were just casually making videos, hitting big numbers and getting a lot of views for stuff. Um, and also, and then you know eventually some of them got very popular and then started to you know get a following like uh, rabies. I yeah. guess <laughs> sadly, which sa- I mean, yeah, kind of sadly. I mean, I don't, yeah, yeah. I I mean, there's a there's quite a few examples of just like uh, watch and views who like kind of started with MLP and then eventually broke off and now they just make good watch and But I think that's like the one of the few examples though of somebody who like started with that, stuck with it, and then got his own following. You know, as shitty of a person as he is, like. Yeah, so it was like before ponies. I think the only th- big thing that made numbers um, anywhere close to whatever was with ponies was like either very specific fads or memes. Like very sp- like you know, it, you know, sometimes there would be like a big fad, mm-hmm. um, but it was like never specifically one source, except for maybe Team Fortress Two. Yeah, which was like Team Fortress Two was so big in the community back in the day. Yeah, I remember. I remember being tired of it. Like I, I've <laughs> like I was like, "Fuck!" I wish people would stop making TF2 videos. And you know, in two th- fast forward, it's 2019 right now, and I'm like, "Please make more TF2 videos." <laughs> God damn, please! I miss them so much. GWL, please come back, please. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, he he is back. Yeah, he know? is back. It's just it's just kind of amazing how uh so many years ago we found out about it, and then people still stick with it. You know. I, I, it's kind of like mm-hmm. similar to Dota for me, and th- <laughs> th- this isn't an analogy that everybody can can get because not everybody plays a game but like that. But, but like yeah. Dota, I mean, you could quit it, but you never actually quit. Like you always come back. You still watch it. You still consume, you know, Dota content. It's yep. the same exact yep. thing with Y two P M V. Like, yeah, and, you might stop yeah. making it because it's too time consuming, but I mean, you'll still always watch it and you'll still always love it. And and maybe if not lo- if not love it, then maybe you'd still like kind of care for it. Or um, if not as like a general rule, maybe you could say that there are still people who would always like care about it, kind of even if they like. There's so many people who have been coming back um, as 
viewers, as video makers, like as active members sometimes, mm -hmm. um, came back just to chat. I mean, I was kind of out of the community for three years uh, because of my uh, previous work. Mm -hmm. um, I, I worked for military and I wasn't home at all. Like barely I was at home, so I couldn't really. And there was no internet connection, obviously, uh, where I worked. So I couldn't really catch up with the community. So I was kind of out for like three years. And, you know, obviously I came back. Um, but then there's people who haven't been like at all in all like in contact with anyone for five years six years seven years and then just they're back <laughs> i mean even if they're not back they're just around like they're you know talking they're uh making anything something else on the internet and still kind of low-key care about about videos yeah um, yeah it's it's really it's really nice even if, it, if it's the dwl that came back this year or last year mm -hmm. uh if it's a star that made a video recently um and um Brendan TV box um and she even said that you might make a video which is insane yeah because she hasn't made a video in like years blitz still um, like one of the top like the fa like the fact that the video was so good that it made a fad is kind of insane. oh blitz yeah. blitz kicks ass dude yeah blitz kicks ass and there's so many good like sign has a lot of good videos that she made a lot of like amazing videos Spies Like You has to be one of my all-time favorite videos. Yeah. Um, same with... And she also, like... And I, I was actually really honored because uh, she used my fucking stupid-ass video as a source. <laughs> 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 when I, like, pretend to hack BB and Gar. Yeah, seriously. yeah. That source is really good. It's stupid, God. Oh. <laughs> there's... <laughs> man, there's, thing, there's things I uploaded to my all that I'm really, like embarrassed and but whatever i i stopped caring you know it's fun yeah whatever. it's fun it's fun to go back and laugh at dude i have like four videos of me they i made what call, i think you might have been around for that it's called omni rant it was like me i still had like so my accent now is okay i guess but back in the time back in the day okay i used to talk like this this was my accent because <laughs> because again like i'm not from the u.s I put up this accent, so I went up back when I didn't have it, I was barely comprehensible, and I made like, <laughs> I made like five, six minutes, six minutes long videos about like fake samples, about like visuals, whatever, and nobody had any idea what I was trying to say. <laughs> I was just, I would just record myself saying like, you know, when you make the visuals and like it's not good, don't uh, use, uh, don't use like, uh, new blue, <laughs> it's bad, don't use. <laughs> and like basically that they're still unlisted on my channel i might send it sometime if Holy you want to see it's fucking yeah. embarrassing <laughs> dude that's that sounds hilarious i yeah uh i'm i was a dumbass i deleted like all my old videos where i did shit like that like oh uh, man uh there was one time i used a source of myself so i was like we lived in the country and i was home alone not very frequently <laughs> And so anytime I did, I just try to do like the most stupid shit and take the most advantage of it. And so uh -huh. one time there was like a spare keyboard in, in the cl uh, office closet. And I was like, okay, whatever. Nobody has ever used this in like a decade. And so I just took it outside. I just started recording and I took an ax to it. And oh then God, really? I, I just threw it around and then I used that as a percussion sample. <laughs> <laughs> You know, what that, you know what that reminds me of? Fucking Torju's one three three seven. Yeah, Swed I think he's I think he's Swedish. Yeah. Um, he like I don't remember how it came to be. I think he was like asking me on Skype, but I thought I was joking. He was like, "Do you want me to record me breaking a a, a laptop for you?" Or like I was like, "Okay, lol, whatever." <laughs> I thought he was joking. I don't remember. I don't even remember having that exchange. He might have done it like on his you know own without talking to me first. He made like a. Like we used to make Ken crushes for each other, probably inspired by BB uh, uh, A90. A90, yeah. yeah. So BB, he was this guy on YouTube. He was like, he would always record himself going like, "Hey guys, I'm gonna crush a Dr Pepper can for whatever who will, whoever asked in the comments." A now he's tribute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we used to make Ken crushes for each other, and then we made stupid other shit like me eating cereal for X, me making like, you know, me taking a piss for whatever. So he made a laptop break for Omni and he's like outside in the garden. He's fucking beating his laptop with like a baseball bat or something. I was like, <laughs> what the fuck is this? Yeah, it might be up still. That's a, that's, yeah. that's a good source. See, yeah. see, like, I'm not, I'm not a big fan of like 
people who source themselves uh mm -hmm. and stuff like that but like what it's what it's just somebody just bored you know just beating the shit out of something like that's pretty yeah, funny bored, I feel nothing like. to do <sighs> yeah or like the milkshake man cp samps i i think mm -hmm. those are pretty endearing uh so earlier you mentioned like your your time in the military so like obviously being removed from something as fast moving I guess, I, I guess it is pretty fast moving as white yeah. PMV. Like, 2014, 15, 16 were pretty big years yeah. for white PMV. Yeah. yeah, I would I would say honestly for me, but this is also coming from somebody who really started in like 2013. I think that 2014 was probably the weakest. Yes, um, I was still following white PMV from from you know from home, and I feel. 14, 15, 16, um, were a little bit, a, a little bit low, a little bit weak. I don't remember what specifically. I think it was like back when like Vine was pretty big and a lot of videos were being stolen and stuff. Yeah. Um, it's when, but during that time, uh, a lot of the sub, like, okay, so today the community, what looks to me is that today, a lot of the sub communities that really started in 14, 15, 16, stuff like that, uh, around that time. Uh, when I when I mean sub communities, I mean like the Brazilian community, the Russian community, the French community. You know, they they started forming these mm -hmm. sub communities, and uh, I feel that around that time they got better because back in the day, if a video had BRYTP in the title, you knew it was it was going to be terrible. I'm sorry, <laughs> absolute I of, garbage. I'm like like I'm sorry, every like I have a lot of Brazilian friends from the from from YTP and V, and I love their videos. I think they're great. If it's Carl, if it's Manlego, mm -hmm. if it's uh, fucking uh, Rick uh, not Ricardo, um, Rod Rodrigo. Yeah, I don't uh, know. Uh, Rodrigo. Car yeah, Ogi, Ogi, yeah. Ogi, and the cockroaches guy. He's terrific. He's yeah. amazing. Uh, and there's a, a, par a Parkuloka, whatever is like this guy who made this three D scanner video visuals crazy, crazy stuff. Yeah, Brazilian crabs are awesome as well. But back in the day, so if a video had a BRYTP in the title. RYTP in the title, or like <laughs> FRYTP, what on like French YTP? In the title. They were terrible. They were horrible <laughs> videos. But these sub committees, they they really you know developed, and and they all have like, like a very interesting, um, like their own their own memes and everything. And yes, oh definitely, yeah. and they're all, also their own style. It's, it looks to me that like so Brazilian YTP and Vs um, have been back in the day. They were trying to be very Japanese like. Uh, today they just like focus on visuals. I think RYTP and Vs, you know, they kind of make videos similar to that style of like 2011, 12. There's like, uh, like, uh, almost uh, audio only covers of the weirdest, dumbest sources, like mm -hmm. really dumb shit, but sounds really good. Um, I don't know all about the French community. I, I've never really got specific advice from them, but they make really good stuff as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. But anyway, uh, being in the army was like. Uh, I had like till this day, I have this source like this sense of like disconnect, kind of you know mm -hmm. that uh, be, be, you know I've haven't really made a very serious YTP in a long time, um, and I don't think I like it's sad to say, but I don't think I'm actually gonna make another big video, even though I you know it's something that I really want to make. Um, but during the military time, I was so disconnected that um, kind of lost lost the, the 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 will to do like big videos yeah, yeah um it was it was it was also like it was a combination of the military so i'll just say it, from the military i was a photographer and video editor for mm -hmm. the military um for training for training like not anything spooky just training videos yeah um and it's not a very good work environment it actually it's a terrible <laughs> work environment <laughs> uh, if it's a mandatory service by the way if anybody doesn't know i was forced to go because that's the law here basically yeah. i couldn't just not go uh, you basically just go to jail if you don't go uh but um you know it was very tiring and, and i got tired of video editing at the at the time because you know you 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 work in a very tiring work work environment mm -hmm. um and then you go you go home and what do you do edit more videos no. So yeah, you play yeah. video games and do nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. More like do nothing because it was <laughs> I was actually pretty fucking. I was like you know bad. Yeah. It yeah. Was, it was tough, but um, yeah. So I kind of you know this disconnect kind of made me drop you know drop. It's kind of like 
I don't know, when I used to play piano, and then I didn't learn, I didn't go to, to piano lessons for a, a whole year. And then I forgot everything I knew about piano. Like, I just wiped, like, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same, same <sighs> for YTPMV. Like, yep, yeah, I, I, th I feel it, it happened to me with YTPMV. Yeah. Um, which, is, which is sad. I mean, Dozzy, Dozzy, and Bacon. Mm -hmm. The epic YTP turned YTP and Veer duo, which I really love. They're really good friends of mine. Um, yeah. They did something that I kind of always wanted to make. Like, like I always looked at it as like a YTP and V graduation project. Mm -hmm. uh, they made uh, Sidewalk Pizza Crimes, yeah. which is, I think, which is, I think, still to this day, my favorite YTP and V. Uh, I think it's just the biggest, most ridiculously um, well-made YTP and V effort that yeah. has ever, ever been pulled in this community. It's so good. Um, it's insane. Yes, it's, it is absolutely insane. And what they did is basically they said, okay, we need some closure, some some form of closure to this um, our stay in this community. And I always wanted to have that kind of closure, like make a graduation project, make like one big fucking enormous videos. And I have a bunch of like projects laying around, like audios done from 2014. I never finished. Like I always wanted to like finish one of that and just go... I did, I pushed myself the hardest that I can within this art form. Yeah. Um, you know, and might still do it sometime. Uh, but for now, I st I'm still working as a video editor at a, at a gaming, uh, mobile gaming company. I do teasers and stuff and trailer and like marketing, whatever. Yeah. So I come back home. I don't want to fucking edit more video. I want to play <laughs> Splatoon. So <laughs> until. I think the the moment I stop working with professional video, I might get a itch to start making videos again. Yeah, yeah, that that's kind of like one of my fears is uh, like if I ever did want to take a job in video editing, which I don't think mm -hmm. I'll do because I'm not going for that at all in college right now. But like, yeah. it would just totally I could I mean yeah, it would just totally ruin any drive you have to. Uh, make any it, funny videos i mean maybe like one off like oh this took me max an hour like that's one thing but to put to put that much effort and then to make like uh you know uh zarlable spook necropolis or whatever from yeah. like last year like oh like i couldn't mm -hmm. even imagine putting that much time in it's um you know it's it's very dependent on what kind of person you are and also what what place you are in life also because i could see myself so I could have definitely seen myself um, keeping a job at video editing and also editing uh, for fun still. It's just kind of like this aftertaste from the army that is still lingering for me. Mm -hmm. um, you could definitely work in video and not get tired of, of like of doing video for fun. I mean, you look at Lenos. I think Lenos is also is like right now in college for video editing and like motion design. Uh, motion, sorry, motion uh Motion graphics, motion, oh, graphics. motion graphics. I was always, I almost said motion sickness. <laughs> <laughs> motion sickness. So, uh, yeah. So I think, I think he's in, in college for that. And I'll, I know a lot of people that started working for, you know, start doing video and still do videos for fun. Mm -hmm. um, it's just that there is a risk that you're going to get tired of it yeah. or your, your style will shift. Uh, my style of, in editing shifted greatly and i'm just now seeing it ever ever since i started working professional video um you know this the, the the kind of messy kind of like messy hectic chaotic like uh fast cuts that i used to do for ytp and vytp and like you know other videos like so when in my height of ytp and v every video that i edited if it, if it was just for fun i would use techniques that i made in ytp and v and like this sort of like internet-y funny fast-paced editing i would also apply them to whatever i edited yeah and i, I, I kind of do still, the same thing yeah yeah and i still have that thing but now it's not the only style that i can edit in and my default like my 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 comfort zone has shifted i recently edited i was in japan last um this Ooh. august and ever since i started doing professional video you can't really do this you know wacky fast pace and everything you know sometimes you have to do like you know make stuff look professional and you have to let footage sit until you cut it uh to the next scene or frame or whatever uh you have to do it more refined 
And I noticed myself editing longer shots or longer clips and not bit, you know, not on the beat. Not everything is just synced to the beat of the song. And some some parts of the this video didn't, it didn't have any even didn't really have music at all. Mm -hmm. It's yeah, it's just weird how your style really does shift. Yeah, if you start if you pick up a different form of editing. Yeah, yeah, and mm -hmm. honestly, like I I really do like the whole YTPMV style of editing of just like go go go, you know, fast pace. But I mean, you kind of have to adopt a new style if you do want to do it professionally. Yep. It's... Yep. Which is which is kind of of a shame, you know. I I, I liked having that you know style as my default, mm -hmm. um, and I would kind of like wanted to come, you know, <laughs> always kind of want to go back to it because I think it's it's incredible. I think the ability to make YTPMVs, and a lot of people don't appreciate. It. I think being able to make good YTPMVs, good cuts, having stuff, you know. I can't really describe the feeling for it, but sometimes you watch videos and the cuts are so nice yeah. and they're so fast. And the best example I could give to it would be like these either Andrew, Andrew's videos, Radock. It's like being able to make like, I'm trying to look at a video that that doesn't have like super big visuals and just relies on like really good cuts. Maybe Kefka and Kel. Oh, um, yeah. That the motion is like, and not anything big is going on screen. No 3D, no like big shapes, no incredible masks. Just really nicely synced video to audio, right? Mm -hmm. With with nice and fun cuts um, that are just, you know, kind of tasteful. I don't know how to really put it into words. Yeah. Um, um I, I, I think I know exactly what you mean. Because like uh, the other day, uh, M Maker released a... Mm -hmm doing it i don't know if you saw it but i'll go ahead and look oh yeah 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 yeah. It. And perfect <coughs> example perfect yeah. example by the way and i even i even made a comment talking about it but like the what it gets to like the doing your mom part like just the way it zooms in adds so much to like the mm -hmm. visuals like there's not much going on with the visuals like there's the you know rock, rock my form in the background like kind of going yep. diagonally but then it's just doing your mom like somebody could easily just like screen flip that call it a day like me like that's something i would do <laughs> but like if like there's ways to get artsy with it definitely and uh yeah yeah like like you know the, the 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 trick with doing your mom is to shuffle the their position so they come back and forth really fast like mm -hmm. little little like that also they that's what people do with rocco farting like pizza day mm -hmm. uh, i like to i like to take him in different positions yeah here's here's a a great example keizu Regis, oh. This <laughs> this video is really really oh, good yeah. about that. <laughs> See this. Speaking of this video, this is a really good example of just like comedy, but not like overdoing it. Like it's just thirty seconds of just classical strings without Rocco mm -hmm. there. It's just funny because you just keep expecting it. You don't know the song. You don't know when when he's gonna come out. And then when he does, it's just <laughs> funny because it's pizza day to a bassoon. It's it's clever. It's a clever video. Yeah. YTPMV really came a long way. It's it's insane. Yeah. This community is like, you know, a lot of people take shit about, uh, talk shit about YTPMV. I think it's mainly because uh, a lot of people in the community are very, um, I think why, you know, it's always, it was always interesting to me to why the general atmosphere and the general consensus in YTPMV is like the general like type of people that would be in the community are like very critical and very cynical sometimes even. Yeah. Uh, and very kind of perfectionist mm -hmm. about everything. And I think it really comes down to the craft being, uh, you know, the very basic form of YTPMV is something that's very tedious. It's something that's very, you have to be very invested in it. Mm -hmm. It's very time consuming. Uh, and it's kind of like an, a, 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 an atmosphere uh, or a um, attitude. That yeah. maintains itself in the community because you have a lot of people who are like that and then you get someone new to join and unless they are very meticulous and very it's it's a sort of personality that you have to have to be able to make something for so long and devote yourself to something that takes so much time and kind of half do it for yourself but also half do it for you know for the recognition mm -hmm. uh if if not the mass recognition then the professional recognition because a lot of people i made a lot of people that that make very bizarre videos very like specific videos 
put a lot of effort in the video that nobody like not a lot of people are gonna get or like yeah i mean e right extremely niche yeah very niche yeah. yeah very niche yeah so so you kind of have to like always kind of do it for yourself to prove that you can do it's very like a very kind of it's like an art um exercise it's like mm -hmm. an artistic exercise that is like very time consuming mm -hmm. and hard to uh, keep yeah. at so you get a lot of people that are perfectionist you get a lot of people that are you know they kind of have to be willing to put this time into it and a lot of the times it will make them a lot of uh, very cynical or very critical towards themselves and other people too so you always have this so during the entirety of the community um you i've always heard people say white pv is dead white pv uh, is dead it's dead it's dying it's stupid it's a waste of time blah 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 whatever and you still have people who are convinced that yeah, i have very good friends that i don't really have this talk with anymore because i just agree to not to, to disagree with because they're close friends of mine. i'm not gonna fucking bash them on the head with about their opinions yeah but i've always i've always thought that the opinion like i've had people tell me the community is dying in 2012 in 13 14 15 16 17 18 and today <laughs> i'm talking to you mr zardable um <laughs> call him out call him out put him on Zarla blast zarla bel ugly y2pmv is not dead i definitely agree with that i i always yeah. thought that that whole i i mean it it basically is like sort of a meme but also serious at the same time like, it's sad yeah because because it's sad that people actually believe in it and sometimes it can really the de uh discourage you mm -hmm. from from keeping at it yeah and, and, and it really like devalues like uh any sort of like i don't know enjoyment that somebody might get out of it like People outside who like know what Y2P is haven't seen it in a while. They're like, "Oh, I thought that died in 2012." It's and it's like, no. I mean, it's it's a very it's a very so. Um, in Hebrew, we have this expression we used to we we say it, which is like, um, "thought that makes a reality." Mm. You know, it's a, it's like it's like a consensus that makes a reality. Yeah. Um, and I think it's very true in here, which which is like why uh, a lot of the times certain like big groups of people or just people in, in in general would get into this cocoon of the community's dying it's they stop having fun with it which is okay i mean i'm i stopped having fun making ytpvs that's why i always i, I only been making short funny videos on twitter mm -hmm. uh for the past year maybe it's okay to not have to 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 to, to lose the edge for something and kind of drop off from it it's all right it happens all the time yeah um but a lot, of, a lot of the times you'd have people, you know, they, they don't get why people are passing them in, 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 in capabilities and skill and whatever. And they would just say, okay, community's dead. It's dead. It's gone. But in reality, you're just tired with the community. It's okay. You can just, but there's no reason to, to reflect it on, on the whole community. If you don't have fun with it anymore, you need, you could quit, but yeah, don't pretend like the whole thing is dead. <laughs> it's not dead. It's dead for you. Oh, that's all right. Yeah, I definitely agree. And and with like a community so like niche and small like this like it feels like anybody's voice can like speak for quite a few people when in reality like yeah. you might have only talked to them like twice <laughs> and yeah today today the community is a lot bigger but back yeah. in the day it definitely counted one people one person would say i think the community is dead and like if he had a big following that would not be good yeah. that doesn't look nice yeah so I guess we'll go ahead and move on and start talking about the career aspect of Y2PMV. Talk about how... Y2PMV paying the bills. Yeah, why, talk about how <laughs> YouTube poop is finally paying dividends fucking a decade <laughs> after everybody started. So a couple of examples. You obviously, you got a job yep. because of it. Yes. Uh, I had a few jobs the past four years I've been working. Did you Did you talk about that at all? Like when you were like, were you like, oh yeah, I'm very capable. Like I made this, <laughs> or did you just kind of keep that all separate? You didn't want to like even like have a like chance of ruining your chances or anything. So I every job interview, every job I had, um, including the military position that I that I got into, I showed at least one YTP interview that I made. Damn. At least one. Yeah. Um. Uh. I also ex except for YTP interviewing, I've also been volunteering for making um so that's it's gonna come as a come off as really nerd like i was, I was sounding like a nerd but um, oh that's fine yeah i volunteer in 
the anim local anime conventions. I've been volunteering in it for the past like years, maybe six or seven years, mm -hmm. uh, from like ever since high school. And um, I've very quickly, you know, I've, I've been volunteering to do various stuff, and then very quickly I became the uh, head of marketing for the organization that does it. It's a volunteering, it's a nonprofit organization, so I wasn't getting paid, but you know, volunteered to do it, so whatever. Yeah. And I made a lot, a lot of videos, and also shot a lot of videos for for you know the anime conventions for teasers for trailers for promos for whatever uh so i always had like a very uh you know big enough video library to, to select videos from mm -hmm. uh so i didn't really have to rely on ytpv but every time i sign up for a job for video i dropped a ytpv in it what, what's like your go-to if you got to show somebody yep so i've shown so basically they're not going to get a lot of how the audio is working because it's very it's a lot more easier to take in the visuals mm -hmm. and understand what's what's going on with the visuals uh and my old visual style is sadly all over the fucking place <laughs> my old visual style is chaotic i've i don't compliment myself a lot i don't think i don't know if it's 100 percent a compliment but i don't think i've ever seen people edit in the style that i was doing Maybe it was because it was kind of ugly, but I don't know. Maybe it was just because it wasn't unique. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to have the benefit. I'm, I'm going to keep the benefit of the doubt. To, yeah, to we'll that. just call it unique and stay positive. <laughs> yeah, we'll stay just get positive. special. Yeah. <laughs> my, my visuals are special. <laughs> they were like dark. And I don't know if a lot of people have seen my old videos, but they're like, they were dark and just chaotic and whatever. But uh, and I like, I like weird motion graphics, whatever. So. I shown Kensokyo the camping grounds, which is probably my biggest video. Mm -hmm. um, it's also it's also visually pretty understandable. Like it was easy to to make sense of. But I'll, sometimes I would just show alt videos that were simple to look at, right? You know, I think one time I showed an alt video that didn't really have visual. It was just box visuals. And then they asked me what the fuck that is, and I was like, so see these clips. This these are my friend making breakfast, and I took samples of him hitting the desk, saying ah whatever. And I, you know, kind of remixed it. Remix. I use the word remix. Yeah. And people, people think it's a, you know, I don't No, I almost said, you know what? I almost said people think it's a big deal. It is a big deal. Yeah. Um, it's something that not a lot of people know how to make. And only recently with the, with video editing being very, like a very inflated market and with video, video editing becoming more and more available to anyone with a functioning brain, two hands and a internet connection has become more popular but um for years you know nobody knew how to make that stuff yeah yeah so, it was like it was like yeah. a kind of like a secret almost and yes definitely yeah and plus like as computers get a lot better like the barrier to entry for uh, any sort of video editing is very low now like oh definitely as long yeah. as you have oh like God. any 300 hundred dollar laptop you should be able to make a video piracy piracy is more common fast internet is more common um footage getting footage is more common oh yeah you can download downloading videos from youtube back in the day holy shit who knew that who who did that <laughs> people download the footage off of fucking quebec gamers yeah uh also i'm oh yeah well no no, no go ahead go ahead i was gonna say that i'm not the only example for people who started getting jobs from the community that i know of and there's probably more people who did also yeah yeah for sure like uh goomba he looked oh yeah goomba he basically learned english from like YTP and I'm I'm assuming you did too, right? Oh, hundred percent, yeah. Yeah, which is <laughs> which is fucking nuts. Yeah. Yeah, Goomba got a job uh, because he learned English. Obviously, Shalik is fucking woo. Shalik is yeah. making big leaps and bounds. Uh, yep. it's just it's just crazy impressive and like I don't know I I don't think a lot of people like you mentioned I don't think a lot of people realize like how special it is uh mm -hmm. with this kind of thing like. Normal people think it's pretty fucking insane. It's a big deal, yeah. Mm -hmm. Putting a lot of effort, you know, sometimes being secluded on the internet in a, in a community that's just full of people like it, you know, the, this very perfectionist kind of like, you always have this feeling that there's someone doing it better than you. Sometimes, sometimes you get a feeling that um, what you're doing is stupid, it's a waste of time, it's whatever. And um, you start to devalue it, but in reality, you're doing something very complex. You're pushing a, you're pushing a piece of software to its, to its fullest extent, mm -hmm. Vegas, Vegas was never meant 
to do the crazy shit that it does with um i don't know give me someone who, who makes crazy ass audio kezu's audio or zarobo's yeah. visuals yeah never in the fucking minds of whoever programmed it at sony or now with magic like it's not meant for that you're <laughs> basically you're basically doing um something that is kind of similar to today kind of less because today it's more accessible but back in the day people making ytp and v to me in my eyes were very similar to people from maybe the demo scene um you know, making, pushing computer software to its fullest, pushing a uh, video game console. Uh, um, like, like, like the NES, like, yeah. Vid yes, yeah. Like, like NES demos. Wait, I'm sorry, I'm turning off the unit there. Oh, you're um, good. So making demos for the uh, Commodore 64, making demos for the Atari uh, 800, making, vi like making demos for video consoles, right? Video game, video, video game consoles. <laughs> YTPMV, in an, in a, in a way, to me, is a very far extent of a, an existing art form, and I think it's, I think it's crazy, dude. I think it's really cool. Yeah. Uh, also, also, I forgot to mention Jab. Also, got a lot of get, get gigs all the time for editing stuff on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know about that? Yeah, uh, he's been for Mother's Basement and. Quite a few others, but yeah, mm -hmm. he does he does a really good job, and all of his stuff is in Vegas and everything, and like, mm -hmm. oh, and speaking speaking of like basically Zarlable and Vegas, uh, like him and I, <laughs> <laughs> him and I, uh, last or back in February, we were talking about EDM, and uh, he brought up like really really bad EDM, you know, really bad remix album. I was like, all right, Zarlable, you know, you know, we gotta make a YTPMV of this, and he's like, oh fuck, okay, whatever. And he made it so quickly. I could not believe how quick he made it. But it makes sense because he, I mean, he's been, he's been doing it like a few years longer and a few years will make all the difference. And uh, like he, he made it or at least parts of it in like 20 minutes while I was still like, you know, half, or I mean, double the time, excuse me. Yep. But. It's, um, yeah, so, you know, in a way, some, you know, some of the videos that I've made recently are like that you know just make them in like 10 minutes 20 minutes yeah because it becomes like a muscle memory almost you know how fucking fast sometimes i like catch myself editing i'm like whoa um yeah it's like it's it's like muscle memory you mm -hmm. do it for so long you know you hear it's like see it's like the people all... who can use photoshop and then just make a picture and then edit just like that and then put it right it's... back into premiere yeah, it's kind of like, you know, it's an art form. It's a skill. Yeah. Just like just like anything else really. Just like drawing, just like, you know, making music. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to give a dumb a really fucking dumb example. I swear to god it's not Deflex or anything. Okay. Um, Go for I'm, it. I, I'm, so, Living Tombstone, uh Yoav, he's from Israel. And, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, and even though he's living abroad right now, uh we used to hang back when he was here. And we met up, I think, like a month before he left. And it was just like, he just got a Switch or something or whatever. I don't remember. But I brought my Switch and then I showed him a core gadget for the Switch. And we made food and he was on the Switch. And in like 10, 10 minutes, he made like something really cool. He made like a few, a few bars uh, of a, like really cool melody. He was like, eh, it's nice. You, you, I'm like... Dude, fucking record that shit. It's it's nice. Upload it. Do something. He's like, nah, <laughs> whatever. You just you keep it. Yeah. So, so the way you know he's been doing music for a long time. We've been making doing videos for a long time. It's kind of the same thing. Yeah. Like I've that's the the only time I've seen someone making anything so quick was was that time. No, mm. wait, that's a lie. Uh, I've also have a friend who's really good at art, and they also you know they could you can just hand them a, a sketchbook. And it was just like, rip, in 10 minutes, they make it like a beautiful looking sketch. Yeah. And, and, um, and it's the same to us. Like those, uh, like I, I vividly remember when I first started making videos, how shit all of them were. And now it's like, <laughs> I do, I do that stuff like that. And it's just like, eh, I'll, I might put this on Twitter. I don't know. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, it's, just, it's, it's very similar. You're right. Real quick. I just wanted to read this for you. This is coming from the. YouTube poop wiki 
Wikipedia article. Uh, the Associate Professor of Cultural Anthropology at Kansas State University, where I go to college, has yeah. defined YouTube poops as, quote, absurdist remixes that ape and mock the lowest technical and aesthetic standards of remix culture to comment on remix culture itself. That is really good yeah. uh, interpretation, interpretation of, um, of YouTube poop. But I will also add that um, it's not only for, sometimes it's all for, for, also for um, uh, criticism of uh, pro popular culture. Popular culture. Um, it's, 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 it's absurdist in nature. Absurdist was like the most accurate thing he said about it. Yeah. Uh, but instead of just commenting about remix culture, it's also commenting. It's also created. It's also um, satire of anything. Uh, popular. Yeah, popular car. Yeah, it could. It could be anything really. Popular cur culture. Uh, uh, um, other people. Other people. Yeah. Lower. Yeah. But anything that anything can be taken out of anything that can be taken out of context. Anything that's trying hard. Uh, anything that is that is. Um, you know, the more the usually the sources that have more value that are funnier are sources that are you know just can be taken so out of context and can be so serious in their trying to be serious, trying to be professional, uh, um, and kind of making fun of them, like Tim Westwood TV. Yeah, is, that's a good example because I mean it's it's supposed to be like a good intro for for Tim Westwood for for his uh, podcast or whatever. And the way, like he got, he got this funny guy to kind of say it a little funny. He kind of says it too enthusiastically. Uh, there's the big explosion right of that. It's like, <laughs> like too much with the, <laughs> you know. So it's it's funny. It's like a good source. And if you look at like what other cool, other funny sources, I don't know. A lot of them are have to be, uh, you know, the CDI, mm -hmm. CDI stuff. You know, you mm -hmm. you basically mock you know these guys try and animate like. Cutscenes for a video game looks like crap. It looks like shit, stupid. But also, it can also be not for mocking uh, purposes. For example, Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog. I think for for you know, in a lot of ways, not everyone thinks it's it's shit. Uh, Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog. I know, I know people that genuinely like that show, but some way somehow uh, the over seriousness of Doctor Robotnik, the the like. 90s approach that's completely weird today of mm -hmm. Sonic and the other characters and the writing that's something that can be exploited very easily. Yeah, yeah. So I would I would like you know I would also add to that very good actually very good understanding of that one guy from your university that the building blocks of YouTube poop uh as a niche inside remix culture has to be very practical simple editing jo uh, editing jokes mm -hmm. so if practical comedy is working with what with what you have um practical editing jokes would be so if the if there's a poster on a wall that you can make the words to say i don't know penis for example <laughs> you do that yeah if there is a tv in the frame you'll have a stop like zooming in into it and have something stupid going on inside if someone's opening a door it would open a door and we'll see like something stupid behind it that's practical jokes in youtube poop mm -hmm. sentence mixing is very practical yeah very very well said i agree uh and and like i don't really like how he says ape and mock because like it not not all the time it's it's not always mocking i mean it's just kind of mm -hmm. it's just taking it and then just remixing it to something that's just funny i guess yeah. i mean yeah youtube poop in, in youtube poop it's a lot more common to mock stuff mm -hmm. but it's also almost as common to just tribute stuff yeah um even if, even if it's like if it's like maybe it, it could also be tributing you know making a tribute to something in a in a comedic way that's kind of making fun of it but just a little bit in in kind of a in kind of like um positive way mm -hmm. right like this is funny this is like it's it's kind of funny that it's bad but i love it mm -hmm. like that's the kind of approach i feel a lot of people have for adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog. yeah with all that being said i got one last question yeah so well actually two i lied so <laughs> uh uh so like what what do you think it'll take for like ytpmv to go mainstream for instance like there are plenty of twitter twitter makes white PMVs blow up all the time and yep. uh people 
genuinely like it. They just don't know that they like it. They don't know what it is. They're, you know. Mm -hmm. So, like, what do you what do you think it's gonna take, or how long do you think it's gonna be until you think it's gonna be pretty big within just like popular culture the in general? Yeah. So for a beginning, I'm going to say that I already think YTPMV is pretty much or not YTPMV per se, but the videos, the type of re videos that YTPMVs are, are already mainstream. Mm -hmm. They are. YouTube poop um, practices and YouTube poop humor uh, is mainstream right now. Yeah. The way the, the I think I think there's a lot in common between deep frying memes, no context, uh, memes without bottom text, um, change the world, my final message, goodbye. A lot of the modern memes, I think, have very similar kind of approach to YouTube poop that, that stuff that YouTube always had. This kind of like out of context, taking out of context, um, remixing different contexts of of media uh i think it's something that always existed within youtube poop and i think it's really crazy to to you know i sometimes you take it for granted but i think it's crazy that it's 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 something big now you know there's there's videos blowing up on twitter that uh i'm sorry i, I said it all the time and a lot of people have said it before me uh i've always thought that people like andrew people like um uh what's his name god daniel radcliffe 777 oh yeah so also people like I'm a person. Mm -hmm. There's people, there's videos blowing up on Twitter that are similar to stuff that they made back in the day. Mm -hmm. And so I think it, it's just that it's not in the context of a full YTP. It's mm -hmm. just like single hit videos, single punch videos that are in that style or they have the, this kind of like shared humor. Not exactly. I'm not saying YouTube poop is everywhere. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I'm saying that uh, it shares a lot of kind of the same humor and a lot of the same... Um, values Stuff for like for, yes, for lack yes. of a better building term blocks. yeah same with the building blocks anyway uh so uh so i think youtube poop and ytpv are already having an enormous um uh effect on popular meme culture so mm -hmm. that's one two back in the day nobody no one of us would have any idea that there would be blown blowing out videos on twitter that are actually ytpmvs but not you know, they don't say they're white TVs, but they are white TVs. Yeah. No one had any idea that it this would happen. Yeah. Um, I certainly didn't think so. Yeah. So, you know, I don't know. I don't think for, for you know, I want to say that I don't think white TV would ever be like a huge thing mm -hmm. just because I think in the end of the day, it's a niche art form and it could be taken into the mainstream and viewed as uh, viewed as nice. But I don't think it ever it would actually ever be really mainstream it's it's again it's it's a niche art form kind of like how i want to say chiptune i want to say how chiptune got very popular i want to say how speed running became insanely popular recently yeah i want to say how a lot of you know different niches kind of became popular but they're not they're you know they're making a lot of views there's this um half a presses video that made like a gazillion views yeah. i don't think you know speed running became some uh, known in the minds of the of the uh, population of the general internet population, but I don't think it'll ever actually be huge. I think as an art form, it can definitely be bigger, and yeah. I think it might happen. Which brings me to my second point. Uh, you asked how could that be possible? How it could be possible to make YTP be pop more popular? The my answer is the absolute, yeah. the complete abolishment, like, abolishment of content theft online. It has to completely disappear it has to go it has to just get out of existence i think it can be done um why because so con content consumption on the internet um shifted from following artists to following meme pages following um kind of like these watering watering holes oh okay yeah yeah i get what you, you put a bucket in and you put it back there's water in the bucket <laughs> and you have a, anyway so they kind of like became these, you know, centrals where you consume content from. If it's uh, pages like, like meme pages or popular Twitter, like cursed videos or shit like that. So, yeah. But recently, I feel that 
the 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 uh, anyway, a lot of people, a lot of my friends also, they have this opinion that content theft cannot be ended. It's just affect the life, you know, whatever. Yeah. But I feel with with I feel that with enough big of influencers, uh, um, people with following, kind of being more open, kind of you know encouraging people to look for original videos, never re-upload. If you don't know the source, do not re-upload. You know, yeah. a lot of people they say, I don't know who made this, but this is really funny. Don't upload it. Yeah. If you if you don't know who made it, don't upload it. Yeah. I know it's funny. Do not upload it. Don't make revenue. Don't make, don't uh, turn a profit of someone else's work. And I think the more people are kind of they know about this situation happening. I know the art community has had a makeover uh, uh, in the uh, in terms of population knowing about uh, population awareness to art theft. And I think videos can help, it can you know also have this thing uh, either with pages like cursed videos getting blown out of existence or starting to pro- to, to to retweet instead of <laughs> re-upload yeah yeah or link originals because the more you are uh, um, the more you know about who made something the more you can identify their style the more you can um go start to appreciate the appreciate yeah you it's it's more you can personalize the person you, you, you get you you know you know there's a person behind this creation and you you, you become more invested in it mm-hmm. you become more you, you know you you care about it more yeah then uh you view the video haha it's funny send to my friend and you call call it a day mm-hmm. yeah uh, and, you value it more and also just as something as simple as just like going to the original video and liking it and following them yeah. and everything i mean that yeah. that makes a big difference in twitter there is no excuse to re-uploading videos there is zero excuse i yeah. could i could understand maybe i could understand maybe doing it on instagram i guess maybe doing it on on uh on facebook maybe on facebook because in facebook again you can share videos but not mm-hmm. everybody uploaded in in public whatever yeah but God damn, Twitter has a retweet a button. You can operate a meme pages and just retweet shit. Yeah. Like, or quote retweet it so people know that it's you, you know? Oh, but if you retweet it, doesn't say the page did it. Okay, so quote retweet. Yeah. Okay, so so uh, you know how they do this retweet where you can see the page, but then in, in so I don't know how they do it. You know, the, the main page is like it says the post is made by the main page but the, it has the original oh i think down, you just like, i think small. you just copy the video link i think yeah i don't know how mean? they do it. yeah whatever that's also an option yeah but people don't do that they just re fucking upload and sometimes they crop the credits at the, they, they crop the 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 watermark the, uh watermark yeah or they make the video so low quality that you can read the watermark it's so sad to see yeah and people they just and you know it really just takes awareness Mm-hmm. It just really does take awareness to know not to share these videos, not to like these videos, boycott pages who do it and try to, you know, because you're not going to be able to take them down most likely. Uh, yeah. I don't think you'd be able to, to DMCA fucking cursed videos. Fuck, like copyright online is in such a dire situation. I'm not oh, going to even bother. It's with so it. bad. Yeah. yeah, that's that's a that's a, a topic for another podcast, but whatever. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But you know, it's it's something that you know I I, I was I, I tried to talk with you know pe- people who, that I know that have a following with maybe having a campaign uh, to raise people awareness. I never really got to it, but uh, you know, might be might be cool to do someday. Uh, yeah, I really think it could make a change. Yeah, I definitely agree, and and that's just like the whole issue of like reach and getting it to like the most eyes and everything. But. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, no, I, I think I think pretty much everybody with a brain agrees with your sentiments. I had a lot of people say to me before, you know, if you take down these popular meme pages, nobody is going to get to YTP and Vs. I, I agree. They won't. But yeah. these meme pages can always credit. Yeah. They can always. And, and even if not the, the 100% of the people who, was, who are watching the main page are going to go to the original and subscribe and follow whatever, a portion of them will. Yeah. Some some people will. I guarantee it to you. So why not start there, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I definitely agree. I mean, it all comes back to like when people first see it for the first time, they're like, "Oh shit, this is really cool. We'll check more of it out. We'll check more of it out." So, the uh my last topic since we're already already Jesus Christ, 2 months out from Magfest. Uh mm-hmm. we'll go ahead and talk about that. The YouTube poop panel obviously didn't go near as well as anybody had hoped last <laughs> year 
But it didn't go. Period. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. But in in that span at, at other cons, you know, it's it's gone. It's gone well. Jab recently hosted one. Uh, I can't remember what it was. A con in Florida, I believe. Exp con. Yeah, exp con, and then uh, Mega sixty four was there. You know, they're watching Zarlables, YHP of Rocco and everything. Just cool shit like that. So, do you have any like special hopes for Magfest? at all this year or are you just kind of gonna wing it again hope it hope it goes well better this time honestly uh, i'm gonna say i'm gonna say it like that uh, i'm gonna put it like that so it's very cool that jab uh i i appreciate jab's work in ways that i can't really express i think jab is doing something that is crucial that has been crucial for the community for so long i think people that gra- usually uh i want to say again graduate from the community kind of been in it but grow out of it or grow, you know, grow to, you know, functioning, working adults. Um, a lot of the time, they put it aside. They don't don't really talk about it anymore. I think what Jab is doing is absolutely crucial to the community because there's not been a lot of attempts to make light in the in the popular, in you know, in 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 general population to talk about YTP and YTPV and what's going on there. Mm-hmm. And I think what Jab is doing, spreading awareness to the masses, is so. I, I appreciate it so much, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was doing amazing, amazing work. And I think the, 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 and, you know, I was very excited when he got to Rocco to see his own video. But I think what uh, excited me more was two panels ago, I think he did, he got to do a panel with Super Yoshi. Yeah. And Super Yoshi was basically the guy who coined YouTube poop. Who coined the term YouTube poop? He yeah. was a guy who, together with um, uh, Mr. Simon or Electric to Ch- the Electric to Cheese, they created YouTube poop from the start. So I think that's that's more of an achievement, honestly, in my opinion, in my eyes. Having someone who literally created the thing have be on panel, it was terrific. And my goal for the YouTube poop panel is, I mean, obviously, it would be amazing to have guests. And to maybe show it to some popular people, uh, I know how amazing it could feel. I mean, we showed Jun Sunoe. I also do Siva Gunner. Who, whoever's listening might listen that doesn't know. I also do Siva Gunner. Uh, and um, we showed a rip, a popular rip of Sonic Adventure 2 to Jun Sunoe. And he <laughs> laughed his ass off. That's like, fucking uh, awesome. Yeah. He had a panel and we just like, and we're like, hey, we're big fans. We showed him the. So I know it, it feels great. To have someone uh, uh, um, who's a you know a role to you and to your craft appreciate the, the thing you do. But I the, my main goal for the YouTube poop panel is have a comprehensive and uh, informative uh, discussion. Yeah. yeah, discussion and 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 a panel about the history of YTPMV. Kind of uh, uh, having people from outside understand what's even going on. In yeah, the minds that, of people who make it, yeah, uh, uh, a little bit of tell the story of the uh, the the creators and the artists uh, that have been important in the community. Uh, I, I'm not gonna. I don't know. I don't want to. I don't want to say the panelists yet because I don't know if it's if anything is final any, uh, right now. But the current roster roster of panelists is comprised of people who have been very inf- influential to the community, mm-hmm. and and or have just been there for a long time and can really tell an accurate telling, and. I really just want to have people know about this and be and be excited about it and appreciate it. Yeah. And uh, and if I do that, if we if we succeed in that, I think that's uh, that's that's you know that's a job well done. Yeah, I definitely I agree. Lies. Yeah, last year last year was a really really was a shame. Uh, mm-hmm. But obviously that was like my first that was my first Magfest, so I didn't really know what to expect. But Ech, last year was a mess, um, <laughs> mainly because of the, the, staff. You know, the staff, the yeah. Magfest staff. Yeah, we were all thrown off balance and just had um, uh, Morgan just, you know, be funny and just say, you know, things to keep the keep the crowd uh, at least somewhere entertained. And uh, mm-hmm. and, you know, and. Uh, some panelists were shit faced. <laughs> not gonna drop any names. Yeah, not gonna say but you any know names. What I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe we'll avoid that this time. Maybe maybe limit it limit it to like one or two drinks. 
maybe <laughs> not no drinking maybe, yeah maybe just yeah. none at all i mean i've already talked with chap we, we agreed to do it a serious like do it way more serious this time mm-hmm. um we want we want to have I mean, last last year was fun. I mean, it was a terrific experience. But I would love it to for it to be both fun and you know achieve the goal at the end, uh, which is is doable. And, yeah, you know. I I definitely agree as well. And and the Siva Gunner panel went extremely well last year. But yeah, it it went really well. Uh, I think everybody was pretty pleased with that. Uh, it's it's kind of like the professional side of shit posting. As much as oh, I yeah, hate yeah. the the term shit posting, I mean. I have a lot, so many IRL friends, and whenever I, sh- you know, I don't really share my IRL friends with what I do online, but every time I do, they're like, "Dude, you make cool shit posts." I'm like, <laughs> "Shut up!" <laughs> Please don't use that term. Yeah. Yeah. I... Kind of a little bit, like, kind of a little bit like I go like that when I say shit posting. Like, yeah, you can call it shit posting. Ah, because uh, I don't want to make fun of them. I don't want to feel like make them feel like they're like you know. Technically, it's not called shit posting. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna be that guy. But uh, but uh, yeah, it's it's a it's actually a lot of the main reason that I joined Siva Gunner to begin with, and I kind of help run the channel now. Um, a lot of the reason that I do that and care about Siva Gunner a lot is because it's very much rooted as well in like this remix culture the 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 the, um bait and switch comedy taking out of context a lot of a lot of it is rooted in the same kind of youtube poop ytp and v-ish humor that i i explained about earlier and it and then you know it's just it's just a lot to do with video game music that i also really like so Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the panel i hope to to maybe also talk about that in the panel or Share share the influences to Siva Gunner because I think I, a lot of people would agree. I think the people in Siva Gunner that that YTP and YTP and V uh, is in a way an influence point. Yeah, to a lot of the content that goes that goes on there. Yeah, there's a huge overlap there. Yeah, yeah. not only in not only in like the the style and the artistic way, but also in in you know the the technical practices, pitch shifting, sentence mixing, um, you know stuff like that. Yeah, that's yeah. that's common in Siva Gunner. Yeah. All right. So I think we're already nearing like an hour now. I think it was a it was a very good discussion. I I really do appreciate. Yes, I I hope I hope this kind of continues. Uh, I think I think having like just a formal discussion of this all is pretty important. I mean, because mm-hmm. nobody nobody's really doing it right now except for like random Discord calls here and here and there. <laughs> yeah, two AM Discord calls with like. Me, Dozzy, and Rob. <laughs> All right. So, thank you, Omni. I really do appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for ha- Thanks for having me. So, once again, thank you, Omni, for joining me on the podcast. I really appreciate it. Thank you guys for listening. It means a lot. Uh, I don't know what schedule I'm going to be having for this, but be sure to subscribe so you don't miss anything, along with my other dumb fucking Y2PMVs. So, thank you guys. Have a great one.